Hello everybody. Um, I just wanted to talk about uh, a new learning tool that's been developed for you guys to use um, in engineering materials. Um, when discussing this idea of alloys, phases, uh, learning about steel and, well, less so cast iron, but the first three things, alloys, phases and steel. Um, and that's a, a tool which um, has been developed in AutoCAD. So this is a, a script down here that you can see on Moodle. Um, this is in week seven, so if you've unlocked that week, you'll be able to access this script. Um, and basically, you'll be using, uh, able to use this script um, to help learn about some of these things. So I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. Um, students who've been through Encore 1010 last semester will be familiar with um, my method of um, script delivery and how these things work. But for students who haven't used it before, um, it basically runs in AutoCAD, uh, which should be installed on all of the university computers. Um, you'll be able to find it in Start, um, All Programs. I mean, your Start menu is going to look different from mine because I'm running Windows 7. Um, all Programs, and it will be under Autodesk and um, AutoCAD. You should be able to search for it as well. Um, and you're looking for this little red icon, except that I don't want AutoCAD Civil 3D. Anyway. Have it open here. Um, the first thing to do is to download the, the script file. So I'll download that first, save it to the desktop. Um, and uh, with AutoCAD open, um, if you start a new file, uh, load the drawing template ACAD ISO. It should This should be default on the university computers, by the way, so you won't need to select that. Uh, but if you're opening it from home, ACAD ISO um, is the template to open. And from here, you can simply um, drag the script file directly into, where is it? This one is, is the one I've just downloaded from Moodle. You can drag the script file directly into AutoCAD and let it go. And you'll have the following pop-up message. So it just tells you um, what has been developed and what the custom commands are. Um, the user environment is automatically changed by the, the script file to um, maximize the amount of usable space. I've left the uh, ribbon at the top on because I know some students like to use the buttons at the top to draw lines and things like that. Um, but even if you're unfamiliar with AutoCAD, you should still find this reasonably easy to use. So as was mentioned on that pop-up window, the extra commands which have been programmed in by this script are all QE. And if we start with QE, the first thing to do is to select an alloy system. Um, so lead, tin, and copper, silver, those are your basic sort of binary alloys. Iron, carbon, this is your steel um, alloy system and has some uh, different properties to the other two. We'll go through that um, towards the end of the video. Um, I might just start with, uh, let's go lead, tin. So when you select the diagram, uh, which diagram you want to draw, it is um, drawn by the program and then you have a number of different things you can work on. Now these um, tasks are sort of arranged from easiest through to hardest. The first thing um, to do in terms of labeling, this is just identifying the various um, points and lines in the diagram and what they all are. Um, identify phases, that asks the user to pick the points in the diagram in each um, section where certain phases could be found. Um, so those first two things, those are just kind of the basics of um, alloying. I'll show you how uh, one of them work. If we go into labeling. So we get the question, select the liquidus line, which is over the tin-rich side of the phase diagram. Now, if you've done a bit of reading, um, you'll know that the liquidus line is on top. So it's one of these two blue lines that we have up here, light blue lines. And we are on a tin-rich side of the diagram. So we have the composition um, of the alloy in percentage tin, and it's increasing to the right. So the liquidus line over the tin-rich side of the phase diagram is this one here. Um, we need to also locate the eutectic, the easy melting point. So this is going to be um, this middle point here. You'll see that the AutoCAD snap settings, which enable you to directly select that eutectic point, um, will be automatically enabled by the program. And this is basically how it runs. Well, you can select any one of the, um, the lines in the program. I'm not going to select the right line this time. I'm going to select this liquidus line again. Um, and you'll see that when you do that, you're told that you have uh, an incorrect answer. You're told where to find the correct answer. And you're told a little something about that. 
Um, again, I might just grab the wrong line, just quickly go through this. You get um, a number of questions right at the end, and when you're done, you can type QE a second time and select something else to work on. Um, so that's that's basically the gist of this, um, is simply to uh, you know select an object and... Oh, I, sh I should probably point out that in labeling, um, selecting an object, uh, for those of you who are completely unfamiliar with AutoCAD, that is um, to simply click on it and when you're done you hit spacebar. And so that will um, that'll be the way of working through that. Okay, um, I will select a new question. Um, some of the more complicated things to do here involve this idea of a composition. So in compositions of phases, um, we're looking at um, what sort of um, or how the phases are actually going to be uh, broken up, what weight percentage of different materials will be present in the phases um, at a given temperature and for a given starting um, composition. So the first thing to do in this, we're, we're asking the question, how many phases are present and what is the phase composition in percentage of tin? If the starting composition is 84% tin and the temperature is 190 degrees. Now, um, if you haven't used AutoCAD before, this again might be a little bit tricky, but um, I, I'd hope that you'd see it's, it's reasonably um, easy to use and there's, there are several advantages to be gained in using this version of the program or this version of uh, learning about phase diagrams over traditional pen and paper phase diagrams. So 84%, um, well we can see that um, we are up in this region somewhere. Um, the horizontal axis is actually um, integer units for integer percentages. So uh, a length along here of 20 units, 20 is the number of units here and it's also the percentage difference between uh, the two tick marks. So 1 unit, 1%. 80% we want to go across um, to 84% and oh, the other way you could do that I suppose you could start from 0 and you could come across and say 84 it doesn't particularly matter you get in the same place um, and we're going to be somewhere along this vertical line that's our starting percentage the next thing we need to do is find this point 190 degrees Celsius so again we're going to be um, somewhere between 150 and 200 um, this, these tick marks are not um, as, as easy to use, but if you see that the um, unit distance is 10 over a spacing of 50, then we need to go up 8 units to get to 190. And so we've located that point there. It's not necessary to draw circles or anything, I just uh, wanted to illustrate clearly where we are. Okay, um, how many phases are present? Well, it happens to be the case that um, here, because we are above the solidus line and below the liquidus line, we have um, a solid and a liquid phase present. Um, what is the phase composition in percentage of tin? So that's something that the program aims to, um, to teach you. And I'm going to go through this, not answering it correctly or showing you how to, um, to get the right answer. Um, I'm going to go through this and show you um, how the program will illustrate what to do if you have no idea. So let's say um, I want to supply an answer. How many phases are present? Well, I know that one, I've got two. Um, which phases are present? Oh, I think it's beta and maybe it's liquid as well. Yeah, that's also good. What's the composition of the phases? Well, this is a part that I haven't worked out before. So I'm going to put in some dummy answers. Let's say 555% tin and negative 10% tin. Oh, incorrect. If you don't understand your mistake in this program um, and you select no I, when the program asks, do you understand? No, I do not. You'll be shown the method that you need to use to find the correct answer. So in this case, our starting composition has been identified. The lines in yellow have been drawn by the program. Um, starting composition has been identified. This is 190 degrees and 84% tin. Um, we have also been given these um, interesting little lines along the base length. So these are the um, uh, the composition lines that we can actually read by checking where this horizontal line from our starting composition, starting temperature, um, runs across to intersect the liquidus line. Where the, inter uh, where the liquidus line has been intersected, if we run a line straight down, 
we will actually find the percentage that we, we end up at. And it's the same on the other side, um, measuring across this way uh, to find the weight percentage in tin of the solid beta phase, which is over there. Remember that we knew there were two phases present. We knew one of them was liquid, one of them was solid beta. We find the composition of the liquid phase by running across to that liquidus line and the composition of the beta phase by running across to the beta line, or the, the uh, solidus line. Um, these uh, lines here as well, I should mention, this, it, for those of you who aren't familiar with AutoCAD, this is, can be done with the command um, dim linear. So if you type dim lin, and you want to figure out where you are on this diagram, you can click one point over there, and another point where you've got this intersection over here, and you can run the line down to find the weight percentage. So basically in answering this problem, you would need to um, draw, find your starting composition, draw a horizontal line, and then put on your two dimension lines to find out what the percentage is. Um, when, you're, when you've had enough of that question, or you've solved it, or you've figured out where your error was, and you select another one, all of the, um, the working out disappears, so all of your, your construction lines go away, and you can move on to the next problem. If you um, decide that you've had enough of a particular phase diagram, or you, something weird is happening with the program, you're not sure what, um, you can reset things with the command QE reset. When you do that, you're also able to, um, as I say, select a new alloy system. So now to see something else that's happening, I might take a look at the iron carbon system. You see in iron carbon we have uh, less options for what to work on, there's no um, composition or mass fraction, just labeling and identify phases. But the iron carbon diagram has uh, a few more phases than were in the, the previous one. So there's a few things to look at there. Um, again, probably something that uh, we can go through in the tutorial after you've read a bit of the textbook, um, and then you'll be able to test your knowledge with the program. Um, okay, uh, if you have any questions on this, just let me know. Um, you can email me or let me know in the lectures, uh, comment section of the YouTube page, anything will do. Um, and I'll hopefully address that, um, and you'll be able to get back with it. Okay, hope that's been helpful, um, and I'll see you all in class.